My guest Citrina Atkins left her nine to five job in corporate Jamaica to grow what you eat and eat what you grow. Yes, she became a farmer. She certainly doesn't look like the typical farmer though. But she will tell us about her journey from the agency to the field. Hi Citrina. Welcome to Mind Over. Hi, hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you're you're the recipient of the Prime Minister Youth Award for Excellence in Agriculture and Agro-Processing. Were you, were you surprised about this award? Um, actually, I was surprised that the Jamaica Forage reached out to me to nominate me for the award. However, um, the process of actually, you know, the journey to actually get the award, I wasn't surprised that I was awarded because I presented myself well and I kind of, you know, laid out my journey in the, uh, into agriculture and the vision that I have for my farm. So um, I wasn't really surprised that I got the award. <laughs> Okay, so how did you feel um, being honored in this way? I was very humbled because um, when I started um, my journey into agriculture, I didn't expect this kind of recognition so soon. So um, I was very humbled and at the same time, I, I, you know, really look and have to recognize my team because without them, I wouldn't have got the award because farming is something it is hard to do on your own. You have to have a steady team behind you. And they are the ones who really help me to put in the work and make me shine. Um, so how long have you been in farming? Well, we started in um, 2018. Our first crop was pumpkins. Um, you know, after we did some research and, and, you know, we were advised to try the pumpkins, we did that and then we moved into scotch bonnet peppers and then we did Irish potatoes and, you know, a bunch of other crops. Okay, but you, you, you're in farming for a short time before you got the award. That is very commendable, man. Thank you. Um, I would have thought that you would have been in farming for a longer time. <laughs> Um, so how did this interest in farming start? Well, um, prior to my journey in agriculture, I didn't really think of actually, you know, going into this space. However, um, my cousin, one day he showed me, um, you know, another young lady, she showed me a so the social media page of another young lady, you know, who was doing really big things in farming. You know, she was champion farmer and her farm had greenhouses and all of that. And I've never seen, you know, farming in that light before, especially in Jamaica. And she was also from Mandeville. So, um, you know, after seeing all of that, it kind of sparked my interest because I've never really seen anybody approaching agriculture from a business perspective before. And I've always wanted to, you know, own my own business and, and I've never ever took the time out to look in this this direction. So when when the inspiration came, I jumped on it and I did some research and then I immediately reached out to Rada and then I ended up becoming a farmer. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So you have a you have a bachelor's degree in banking and finance, and you were working at your nine to five job. So you left your comfortable job in an AC, gone into the hot sun. Um, you had a secure income each month, and then you took up farming, which is so unpredictable. Did you at any time have second thoughts? Um, like, am I doing the right thing though? No, no, no. I am, I've always been a risk, risk taker. So, um, and as I said, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. So I understand, you know, what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the challenges that I would face. I had an idea of all of that. And really, and truly, I'm, I wasn't looking for security. You know, I wasn't looking for income security. I'm actually looking for financial freedom. So, um, and I realized my 95 job wouldn't be able to give me that. So I had to, you know, while I'm young and healthy and strong, I had to, you know, take charge and, you know, journey down into the unknown and, you know, see what is out there and, you know, gain my own experiences and create, create something that can, you know, leave from, leave for my generations to come. Um, so were, were your family supportive? Uh, yes, my family has always been very supportive. Um, 
when I told my mom I was going to, you know, leave the job and so, so on, um, she, I think she, she just trusts me to make the best decisions for me. So I, I've never been opposed and have anyone tell me, oh, no, I should, you know, stay in my job or anything like that, even with my friends, because they know me and they know that sitting in the office all day, it wasn't very fulfilling. I was, I was next to depression because that's that was just not not what i envisioned my life to be you know on that on that um that journey so my family has always been very supportive and my mom she put all the effort to help us in the farm my uncle dion campbell who is my cousin's father he gave us you know some investments and so on and really showed us support and then i had other cousins coming on board also and giving us some startup capital to kick off everything. So when you decided to actually go into farming, where did you get the land first? Um, well, I'm from Newhall district in Manchester. It's a rural community and there's a lot of um, old mined out land that, you know, back in the days of, they used to farm on it, but no persons just have cattle, like a small amount of cattle. So the land was underutilized. So my uncles um, have control over a good amount of this land. So we actually reached out to them and they told us, okay, well, you know, since that's what you want to do, here's the land, you can go ahead and do your farming. So getting the land was not a challenge. However, I understand that, um, you know, some persons don't have it that easy. Um, land is actually one of the biggest challenges, you know, they have, um, but, um, the government know, you know, a lot. I think it was 20% of um, agricultural lands to go towards youths. So, um, you know, they can reach out to the um, government agencies and they'll definitely help them in attaining land. As long as they have a steady plan as to what they want to do, use the land for. But going into this venture must have been um, overwhelming because you didn't have any experience. You didn't have any training. So how were you able to get the necessary information that you needed, the necessary training that you needed? Well, you know, when we, when we, um, our first year at U, they always say, you're here to read for your degree. So, um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, um, I'm very good at researching and finding the necessary information and the necessary tools to equip myself in whatever it is that I decide to undertake. So that's the, that's why one of the first things I reached out to RADA because I know that when it comes to agriculture, that's the agency to go to. And then I reached out to the Jamaica 4-H and from there I did um, online research and I listened and, you know, whenever someone says something that I don't understand, I'll just do some more research and dig deeper and going down the rat hole and all of that lead me to so many things so over the over the few years that i'm in this space i know so much more than persons who are in the space for <clears throat> a longer time so um, i i know how to do my research and gather my information and my tools <laughs> so um what, what were some of the programs that um rather offer um well from, um when when i left the the job i was going to rather every day i just went there and went to the um at manchester rather they have a, a greenhouse nursery so i just went there every day and the the person in the greenhouse you know we had conversation and he showed me how to sow seeds and i just i'm just there and picking his brain and so on and then um he told me about the jamaica forage which was also on the rather building so I signed up for the reap the reap um program. I think it was a couple a couple months ago I completed the program and I was given inputs and so on. Also recently completed another um reap programs that was sponsored by the US embassy and uh, it's um facilitated by a non-profit organization in Medieval. I actually saw that one on Instagram. And I signed up and I was awarded, you know, some funding to, you know, start my, um, you know, improve my farming and make it more technologically based. So it's about research and actually, you know, having a keen eye out for, you know, the programs that are available and so on. Because there are a lot of programs that are available, especially for youths. So, Sipina, you see farming then as a business is that what you're saying uh yes definitely it is a business um 
the thing is, currently, right now, farming is my only source of income. And if I'm going to treat it as something that is not a business, how oh, then can I expect it to give me the, the right returns, right? Whatever I'm doing, especially in the farming, I treat it as a business. I ensure that I keep my records. I ensure that, you know, I have a structure and I follow that structure. And I'm always, I always try to remain flexible also because, you know, even though your plan, sometimes you have to be flexible because things don't always work out. But you have to, you know, know how to navigate certain things and ensure that, you know, your, your business flow as it should and generate the right amount of profits. Um, for me, when we just started out, our land was mined out land, so we're having problems with yield. So, um, I started doing some research and I get connect, got connected with, um, you know, the farmers in Clarendon who has the chicken manure because chicken manure is good organic matter for the land. Um, and I'm in the process now of actually getting some chicken manure, like a truckload of chicken manure on the farm, so I can have it readily available to incorporate in the soil. But even before that, I was, you know, getting chicken manure from farmers in my community, getting chicken manure from farmers in my community to supplement for the, the lack of um, nutrients in the soil. So it is a business and um, it should be treated as such and uh, you should identify your deficiencies and work towards improving them. Um, so how has your degree in banking and finance helped you? Well, as I mentioned earlier, for one, <laughs> I'm, you know, even though I did banking and finance, generally speaking, I think all you students are trained to, you know, do research and find information and utilize the tools that are available to them. So that's one. Um, also, it helps me with the record keeping. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with accounting procedures and so on. Not to like the greatest extent of an accountant, but I can do, you know, the relevant stuff to ensure that my business, when it comes tax time, I'm up to date with my taxes and so on. And I'm not running up and down and trying to find the receipts and, and stuff like that. So it really helps. And um, just generally speaking, um, you know, having having the banking and finance degree, um, I think it really contributes to how I view, like the view I have of the agriculture business of my agriculture business because it's um i'm just just trained to see things in a different light there's a stigma attached to, to farming that boy you know this, this is a dirty job um when we think of a farmer we think of somebody with you know with a with a hoe and and one bag over them shoulder i go i go to the ground right um but that has changed. What are some of the areas in farming that persons can go into? All right. So the first, the first area that pops in mind is um, beekeeping. It is not a dirty work if you don't want to, you know, engage with the soil. Even though nothing is wrong with engaging with the soil, it's actually very therapeutic. But um, beekeeping is a very lucrative area that young persons can um, look into and also they can actually join the forage reprogram and at the end of the program, you know, they'll get the necessary tools to start their beekeeping business, just as their crop production business or their goat business or whatever they, the area they choose. Um, also, rabbit farming, you have goat farm, goat rearing. You have a lot of areas that um, will interest young persons. You also have aquaponics farming where you it's a you you grow the plant in a soilless medium and they you use the fish as the fertilizer so it's like a symbiotic environment where the the plants clean the water for the fish and then the fish provide the fertilizer for the plants so um that's very and a very exciting area you also have hydroponics where it's also involves no soil plants are grown in in water and you just add the nutrients to the water and the plants will take up the nutrients from there. So there are a lot of exciting areas in agriculture that persons can go into. Agriculture is no longer, you know, a little man with a machete going to his farm or a little hoe and killing out himself in the sun or anything like that. No, 
Nowadays, you, you utilize, um, you know, machinery and do these things. If you're thinking of even a yam production nowadays, you can use a tractor to make the yam hill instead of having a man out there, you know, laboring so hard to, to dig a hundred or how many yam hills you, you're looking for or whatever. A tractor can do that in, in like a day or less. So technologies are, are, are there now to make things easier for farmers. <laughs> So, where is your farm located? Uh, we're located in a little district called New Hall. Uh, we're, um, it's close to Williamsfield, Manchester. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just right on a, it sits right on a little hill. <laughs> okay, and what, what's the name of it? The farm is Gertie's Agroproduce. It was named after my, um, my our grandmother. Oh, As I say, it's a family business, so, yeah, we name it after mm -hmm. our grandma. <laughs> Oh, and how big is the farm? We have access to 20 acres of land, um, but we're just utilizing about seven acres because um, with farming, you have to have water. And we're looking to get get um, some grant funding for a pond so that we can actually, you know, fully utilize the entire 20 acres. Currently, we have um, scotch bunny pepper and irrigation, and um, we have a quarter acre irrigation that we're going to have some lettuce on, and another about a little over um, quarter acres that we're going to put some um, some sweet peppers on. But those are the only irrigated plots at the moment. So majority of the farm will depend on rainfall. And um, we don't like to gamble. <laughs> we, we don't like to gamble. We like to you know, ensure that, ensure that our success is, is on the sure side of things. So water is needed. Yes. So how many persons do you employ? Um, I usually say 15 persons, um, and how that works. We don't have full-time employees at the moment. Um, oh, okay. because you know, with this limited infrastructure and so on, sometimes we have to drop production, etc. And you know, we don't want to have persons that we have to lay off or anything like that. So, what we do, um, we just get persons to carry out the specific task that is needed. So, if we're going to plant sweet potatoes, we get our workers to plant the sweet potatoes. If we're going to pick peppers, we have our female workers for that. So, it's just different tasks that we utilize. Uh, um, we have a we pick from a pool of fifteen persons to to carry out our daily activities on the farm. Okay, so were you able to pick the interest of the youths in the in the area? Um, well, majority of our of our workers are women, women. So the we pick the interest of the females in the community. Um, age group age the age group range. Um, varies go up to I would say maybe maybe in the fifties or so. Um, but um, for for the youth, especially the males, um, not so much. We we haven't we are yet to actually connect. We're yet to connect with that um that um demographic. But we're working on it. We're bringing some exciting things to the farm that we think will um you know pique their interest. Um, what are some of the, the challenges that you have faced so far? Um, number one challenge, finances. Um, you know, farming takes a lot of, well, the farming that we want to do, especially with that 20 acres that we have, you know, we, we need, um, a lot of capital to, to cover that 20 acres and to really bring our vision to life. However, we understand that things take time. So we have to just work with what we have and try to utilize our funding as best as possible. And another one of our challenge is, um, you know, the lack of water because we can't farm without, without, um, you know, an adequate supply of water. So in the dry seasons, we have to reduce production. We have to reduce production to take into consideration the, um, the limited rainfall type of technology are you presently using on your farm well currently we are using um the drip irrigation yes and we have some um a few two tanks two concrete tanks that we harvest water in so we are harvesting water and we're using the drip irrigation and on one of the the drip irrigation system we have a irrigation timer that it's set up so, um, you know, you don't have to go there and turn on the water and, you know, water the plants. You just set it and it manually water the plants for you. And it automatically water the plants for you. So 
all you have to do is just basically go there and scout the field and ensure that the the crops are getting you know enough water and so on. Yes, yeah, so those are the technologies that we're using currently. And um, one of our goal is actually to purchase a tractor. Um, we don't really see the funding right now, but um, as I say, you just set the intention and things will fall into place. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we we want our own tractor on the farm because tractor cost is uh, extremely high. And it is actually one of our um, highest costs at the moment. So um, we're working towards, you know, getting a handle on that. Um, you, you're in a male-dominated field. What has your experience been like with, you know, the male farmers that you have to interact with? You know, them treat you good? Um, actually, yes, they treat me very good. And <laughs> some of them, <laughs> some of them actually cannot believe that I'm a farmer. Um, but yes, they, 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 um, the sector has been very welcoming for me. I'm not exactly sure about the experiences of other females, but, um, I can only speak for my own self. And, um, I must say, I, whenever I reached out to, you know, any of the male farmers who are in the sector for, you know, years and so on, and I asked them advice, etc., they're always willing to, you know, provide me with the necessary advice. And even if they don't know, they direct me in the, send me in the direction of someone who can help me. So, so I feel very welcome. What about markets? Cause, because from time to time we hear about farmers, crops rotting because they're unable to find markets. How do you sell your produce? Okay, um, before we even start selling the produce or even plant the produce, we do research. Um, you know, we, we try as best to figure out the the supply on the market currently and what the supply would be like if we plant it now and it's, you know, already maybe say two or three, four months down the line, what the supply would be like and the environment, etc. So we start from there and we start reaching out to, you know, for let's say sweet potatoes. Before we even plant the sweet potatoes, I reach out to, you know, my buyers, which are mostly exporters. And I'll say, hey, you know, I'm considering planting two acres of sweet potatoes. You know, when it is close to ready, I'll give you a call again. And, you know, just to touch base so that you remember me. And that's how I try to keep connection, you know, with the buyers and so on. I also, you know, do a lot of research, as I said, online. And I look for all types of um, agro-processors. And I ensure that I have, um, you know, a market for all my all grades of produce on the farm. So, for example, you know, the grade A, you know, most mostly goes to exporting. And then you have the B and C, which is sold on the local market and to the agro-processors. So, I ensure that I have a lot of persons in my arsenal and also rather have a marketing arm. So, I have a very good relationship with the RADA marketing officer just in case I run into any run into any problems, which has happened multiple times before. I run into problems with selling the produce. I reach out to him and he'll reach out to other parishes and so on because sweet potatoes can be, you know, in large supply in Manchester, but when you go in another parish, it is in low supply. So, um... You know, we reach out and we get the produce to wherever it needs to go. Has the pandemic affected your business in any way? Um, I'd say no, because we quickly, um, as I said, we try to be very flexible. So when the pandemic came in, um, the first thing that we did was create some, um, some uh, variety baskets. And we started doing our marketing and we went into the, the quarantine zone. I think it was um, in Portmore. And, you know, we connected with persons and persons reached out to us on Instagram and we made some deliveries, etc. It was very hectic because that is not our um, business model. We, we mostly focus on selling bulk produce, but the exporters were having problems with flights, etc. So we had to just, you know, quickly just jump back to something else and we never had a problem at all. So um yeah, so that's that's we we're not doing that now. We're not doing that now because things kinda normalize now and you know, persons adjust to the change. But um it is something that we can consider, you know, maybe in the near future to do some distribution. What has been the most rewarding thing for you as a farmer and as a business owner 
um the freedom <laughs> yes i i love the freedom and the <laughs> yes i love the freedom and um the the lack of I don't want to say lack of structure because there is structure to to the, my farming business, but just the the freedom that it provides me. If I need to do something away from the business, I'm able to do it without having to report to anybody and say, "Oh, I have to go here. I'm asking for some time off or whatever the case may be." And when I'm in the farm, like I, and the cool breeze and the birds and everything, it just keeps my mind very settled. And that's honestly one of the things that I enjoy most about it. Um, sometimes the sun can be very harsh, but there are ways to, you know, work around that. You just, <laughs> yeah, you just head out in the early mornings or, you know, you go in the evenings when the sun, you know, is not so harsh. Try to avoid the midday sun. But other than that, trust me, man, the freedom is the the best thing. And I just enjoy, you know, the fact that I can say, you know, I own my own business. And I think a lot of young persons, a lot of young persons like the, the ring of that, you know, being their own boss. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So d describe a typical day at the farm for Citrina. Okay. Um. So I, I farm with my cousin, Ray Campbell. Both of us are, you know, um, owners in the business, co-owners. So um, he does most of the, you know, crop care and the spraying and, you know, all of that. Or you'll hire somebody to help him if the plot is like a large plot. Um, I, I don't really mess around with the chemicals or anything like that on the farm because <laughs> it's you have to be very precise and we don't want to, you know, hurt people or anything like that. So with these chemicals, you have to ensure that the, you're, you're using it properly. So my cousin has that down to a T. Um, for me, I mostly do like the bookkeeping and the record keeping, or I record whatever he's spraying on the on the crops because some persons, they really want to know what is going on their food. And we try to, you know, limit this as much as possible. We do scouting. So my cousin, me and my cousin, we'll scout the field. So we'll go maybe like say, Maybe it's like say 8 a.m. in the mornings and we'll scout the field and see what the plants need. If there's not a need to spray the plants for pests or anything like that, we don't. We try to keep these things at a minimum. Um, my cousin, again, mostly, you know, he will ensure that the crops have enough water and the workers are organized and all of that stuff. And as for me, I do like the taxes <laughs> and, you know, mostly the paperwork stuff. And I help out on the farm in terms of like planting if we're, if we're having, say, we're planting peppers or if we're reaping peppers or anything like that. That's where I would come in or I would reach out to the workers. I deal with like the human resource where I reach out to the workers and organize the work day and all of these kind of things. Yeah, so we he balances he balances me and I balance him. So we go hand in hand and we make a really good team. So so um, farming can take long hours. It can be tedious too. So what do you do to unwind? You know what what do you do? Well, um, well, no, with the COVID we can't really go anywhere to unwind. So I, I unwind at the farm. As I say, I enjoy the cool breeze. So even if we don't have any work planned, we can just go there and we just sit down and we just, you know, have a reason. The breeze and we make sure we have our food with us and all of that. And Manchester is a very cool parish. So, you know, it, yes, we're very comfortable on the farm. So for now, that is what, what we're doing to unwind. And also, we're very family oriented, so we take our little cousins and the farm as well. And trust me, man, it's sometimes it's a joy to really see how they are eager, especially at this stage. Um, he's nine years old, and we have a five year old cousin. Um, they are very eager to come to the farm as soon as they see you putting on your boots. You know, they'll run, come, hey, where are you going, and stuff. So, and they want to come with you. So, we just bring them, and they'll be there. And you know, it's 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 just a joy, man, to really you know see how how they interact with the plants and and all of that. So we just hope that you know that quality stays with them. Yes, through their teenage years and so on. <laughs> yeah. So what has been the keys to your success as a farmer? Um, planning, planning, because with, um, with proper planning, you have a very good execution. So, um, when we plan, 
things don't always go as planned but you know it Im- eliminates a lot of the things that can go wrong and um we're also new to farming so we reach out to experts it's a, it is okay for us to say you know we don't know how to do this and to ask somebody else who who you think might know or or ask someone to point you in the right direction because um as i say i keep saying we don't gamble so we ensure that our execution is on point um <clears throat> Where do you yes. see your business in another five years? Any plans for expansion? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, definitely. Um, so our goal is actually to create an agriculture hub. So we want to have uh, like a mother farm setting where where our farm and our farm is like the epicenter of the agriculture um production in the area, and then we you know engage other farmers around the area and then we assist them in selling their produce because one of the things that we notice is that some of these farmers, even though they've been farming for years, they don't know where to sell the produce and um we we have that knowledge now and we're growing our database. So, you know, as we continue to grow our database and so on, we can engage with more farmers and assist them to sell their produce and so on. And that is also good for us because it keeps a consistent supply of produce going to these buyers. And that is what they're looking for, consistency. So um, that's the goal. And we also want to get into exporting and agro-processing, especially agro-processing with the scotch bonnet peppers and the, um, the sweet potatoes. Yeah, because we notice that persons are looking for a lot of gluten-free options nowadays and sweet potato can be turned into flour, which can then be turned into, you know, other stuff like maybe pancake mix, pancake and waffle mix and, you know, very exciting stuff like that, which is actually very healthy. And also another problem that we realize is that persons like the small processors, the persons who do like the sauces and stuff like that, the smaller persons, they have problems in getting the scotch bonnet peppers and maybe even the skeleton and stuff like that to create their product. So if we can do a primary processing where we process these and sell them in maybe like the, the large buckets, like the five gallon buckets and channel these, these um, processed goods, pre-processed goods to them, they'll have it a lot easier you know, when they come come on to get in their um, raw materials and scallions can be turned into mash, peppers can be turned into mash and all of these kind of things. So these are these are some of the research that we're doing now so that we can um, ensure the success and longevity of our business in the future. Good. You seem to have some big yeah. plans and I hope you'll be successful. Yes, them. yes. Um, so thank you, what, thank what you. What do you think the government can do to engage more youth um, into agriculture? Well, um, currently I think the government is doing a lot, especially um, you know, Minister Minister Green. He's he's doing a lot right now to ensure that more youths come in the space and more youths are successful in the space. And I'm realizing that he's working to change the mindset around farming. And that is where it begins. Once you start seeing farming as a business, business, then you'll start approaching it differently. So even with a lot in a certain percentage of lands to go towards young persons in the agro parks and, you know, all of these spaces, even the Jamaica 4-H who is, you know, providing all of these programs and giving youths inputs to start their farming business and even, you know, soft skills like, um, you know, how to manage the business and do your farm, um, your farm finances and all of these things. So a lot has been done. A lot um has been done and they're doing a lot currently. So persons, young persons just need to take advantage of these um opportunities that are out there to ensure the success of their business. Right. So so what advice do you have for young persons who want to go into to farming? Going to farming. Well, the first advice I always give is to just do some research and to reach out to Rada and get some expert advice. Don't don't be afraid to say you don't know how to do this and you know you want somebody to teach you how to do it. Also, if you know someone who is doing what you're doing, you know, and doing very good in the fa- doing what you want to do, 
and you know doing very good in the farming space you can reach out to them and ask them to mentor you but please be serious because these persons they are pressed for time and if they see that you're serious they'll trust me they'll work with you you know they nobody i've never encountered nobody who is mean with their knowledge and you know hoarding the knowledge for themselves they're always willing to assist and trust me, knowledge is very key. And the application of knowledge is a key thing. You have to pay attention to how you, you know, apply your knowledge um, to ensure your success. So um, reach out to Rada, reach out to Jamaica Forage. And um, you can even go on Instagram and follow all of these, you know, information information pages because that's how I, I you know found out about a grant and I was awarded a hundred thousand dollars to you know equip my farm with certain technologies and you know get some more scotch bunny pepper and so on. So it, it's out there. The information is out there. Just just search for it. Um I just want to give you an opportunity to heal up some of the persons them in a new hall who have been supportive um of you on your journey. So who are some of those persons? Uh, well, definitely I have to start out with my workers. Um, well, let me start out with my my, uh, my team, my management team. So I definitely want to, you know, give a shout out to Roy Campbell. He's my, um, my co-partner in the business and he was the one who showed me the page and inspired me to get into, get into farming. I definitely want to give a shout out to his father, Dean Campbell because he gave us a lot of seed funding and he's one of the reasons why we're we're here today. And, you know, my cousins, Jeremiah, Keron, Siobhan, and definitely no, down to my workers now. I definitely, one, my number one worker is my mother, Enid White. Trust me, man, she's, she's like the driving force. Whenever we're not feeling motivated, she's always motivated. I don't know where she gets her energy from. I tell her, you know, they're made with a different kind of material from us. So, um, so yeah, we want to say, uh, give a shout out to Rose, to Errol, to Blocker, <laughs> and, um, you know, Sister Jen, Darkas, you know, those persons are always assisting us on the farm and we're really, we're really grateful for it. And um, they're one of the reasons why we're, we're, you know, where we are today. Boy, Citrina, it, it was a pleasure talking to you. And I must admit that, boy, you have me thinking about this farming thing, you know, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We would, we, we would welcome you in this space. We would welcome you in the agriculture but, space. <laughs> you really should consider it, though. You, you really should consider well, it. Actually, I'm from the country, you know, originally. So I have a little country thing, you know. Yeah, man. A... Okay, which one, of, which one of the countries are you from? Which one of the parishes? Alexandra. Saint Anne. Okay, yes, man. Yes, man. You need to get, get some land and do some farming up there. Walkers would... Walkers would we'd really thank you for, for producing some scotch bunny purple for them. So consider it. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure. All the best for you and your business, you know. Hope all your plans and your dreams will be realized. And I must say, I have to thank you for this opportunity, you know, to share to share with you and to inspire youths to get into the space because we need more youths in the space. And there's so much, so much here for everybody. You know, there's no scarcity when it comes to food and, you know, producing food and so on. There's enough for everyone. So come in the space and contribute to your country as much as you possibly can. Thank you. <laughs>